let me ask you a question. What is the difference between having enemy logic that just kind of runs every tick with no sense or semblance and kind of just does its shit and having the brilliant idea of like, oh, I should set up states for my enemies as well so I can build on this logic much easier in the future. The answer is about five hours of wasting your goddamn time. Welcome to Zooming Game Dev, Devtober, Day 12, even though I'm recording this on Day 13. I spent about six hours yesterday on a fool's errand that didn't make a whole lot of difference. It'll be better down the line, and I'm kind of happy that I figured it out. But man, six hours could have been spent doing a lot of better things. So, if we open up the logic and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, that's not it. That is it. So, I have state default and state hit for the enemy family. Then I also still have some additional conditions on top of it for the slime. And the reason I decided to do this is because the slime has like two animations it cycles through to kind of give it a kind of like a little slithery animation. And when I just had this all in one state, I was running into similar things with the player, which makes sense uh, that because these two different animations were two different conditions depending on when they got hit which state it was in sometimes it would not cycle to the correct animation uh which again it was just causing conflict because it was all running on top of each other the same thing before you think i would learn my lesson so i was like you know what i'm just gonna nip this in the butt real quick uh i'm just gonna take all the logic and drop it in make a hit state and a default state and everything will be hunky dory it was not hunky dory uh it caused huge 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 huge, huge problems. Uh, things were behaving just randomly. The, the, the character would just kind of like fly, spasm through the air for no reason, even though there were no conditions setting it to change its, its position like that. Uh, sometimes it would just break. Sometimes it wouldn't register hits at all. And I kind of tamed it down. And the problem that I was running into the most was that because the new logic was that when an enemy gets hit, go into the hit state, you could only hit them once, right? Because, like, Azumi has a combo animation, like a three-hit Mega Man X style ch -ch -ch kind of thing. The problem was that the way the logic was set up before, since it was all running concurrently without states, every time you did a swing and the hitbox overlapped the enemy, it did a hit, exactly like you expected it to, so I didn't have to program any logic for that. It just happened automatically. Now that there's a state, as soon as you go into the hit state, it doesn't register hits anymore because you're not in the default state that's checking for hits. And when I tried to put, you know, a hit check back into the hit state, you know, if you're in the hit state and the condition is send it to hit state, you're already there. So again, nothing changes. So I was like, all right, maybe I need to make a second hit state. So if you get hit the hit state, it goes into that one and then it sends you back into the hit state again. So you just kind of bounce right out of it quick so it can kind of start the loop over. Because as far as I know, there's no there's no logic and construct to just restart a loop. Uh, that didn't work either. Uh, that just crashed it. <laughs> it just was like, it just was not doing it. Uh, so I was like, okay, maybe I need to make the second hit state a duplicate of the first hit state. And then at the end of that one, if it gets hit in that, it just goes back to the first one. So you're kind of juggling back between these two different states of hits, but the player doesn't notice the difference. That just sent it directly to the second hit state, and everything was registering as two hits. So it was fucking dumb, dude. And it took forever in the debug menu to just, like, try and slowly, painfully figure out why the fuck this was happening. So eventually I figured out I needed to add a for each condition and that would let it hit. And then I would be able to hit multiple times and I was like, oh, nice, I fixed it. But I didn't fix it because for some reason, for some reason, it only would register the first and third hit of the combo. The second one didn't register. And I still don't exactly know why. My best guess is that the first hit would hit, the four each wouldn't check the second one, and by the time the second one was done, the state had changed back from hit 
to default again, so when the third swing comes down, it just does it again. I tried slowing the game logic down to like 30% at normal speed so I could see how the states change in, not real time, well, I guess real time at that point, to see how the states change in the debug menu, and it still didn't fucking do anything. So I just had to like start making assumptions, guesses, as to why is this happening? Because according to like my brain and the way the logic is written out, this should be working, but there is some weird esoteric condition that is causing the second hit to not work. So I first had to say like, okay, is it something wrong with this, the enemy state, or is it something wrong with the second hitbox? So I had to go make a new object that could register hits and I had to make sure that the strike was working on a completely separate object outside of the enemy logic. And the hits were working fine. So it was something with the new states that I had set up. So went back to there. I was like, all right, well, now I gotta test and see if it's the enemy's logic or if it's the slime logic on top of it that's causing problems. So I had to disable the slime logic. I had to put back the test enemy again and that still wasn't working. So it was something with the enemy family's logic. And I didn't know what it was. So I just had, had kind, of, kind of sit there and just imagine, kind of like just ponder. What could possibly be the case? I have no visual or, or any sort of information on what this could be. I just have to sit here and kind of like contemplate and imagine, hmm, what could, what could possibly be happening? I have no way of testing it. I just have to think. I gotta imagine. And so I was just imagining for hours and hours and trying and tweaking and changing little things. And sometimes it would break it worse and sometimes it would make it a little bit better, but it wasn't going to work. And then finally, I just said, well, maybe if I have the four each on a nested on collision thing in the enemy state, maybe that will work. And I guess it did, but it couldn't be uh, the second part of the condition. If you see here, it has to be nested. This took hours and hours of debugging. I went to bed at like 7 a.m. last night, and that's why this video is coming out late because I just woke up because I just got some sleep. This sucked. And the reason this sucked is because yesterday, earlier, before I got on this shit show of a, of a tangent, I started to block out the time I had left before November 8th, and it is going to be fucking tight to get something presentable out by that time. There's still a lot to do. The biggest elephant in the room, really, for me, is getting all the enemies designed and animated. That's going to take a long time, and I only have a week to do it. Um, I'll probably do put up another uh, video after this one when I go downstairs and I grab the the notepad that I put the schedule on. I kind of break it down so everybody knows what's coming in the future. But this was six hours I really could have used for something better, something more effective, something that shouldn't have been such a pain in the ass. Like I'm glad the foundation's here now, so that going forward as I make more enemies, like I won't run into problems. But God fucking damn it, like. Like, that was time I really needed for other shit. And, like, time is really valuable now. Now that I kind of have the whole road map out in front of me. Like, I had these ideas roughly in my head, but seeing it on paper, I'm like, oh. 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 So, it's gonna be fucking tough. It's gonna be fucking brutal. But, uh, we can just run through the game quickly. Because I did also add some stuff with the slime itself. Uh... So I changed the slime sprites. I mean, they, they're still the same like frames, but I changed the interpolation, the uh, the, the, the the not interpolation, the um, the dithering from patterned to uh, I forget what it's called, like Floyd Steinbeck or something in GIMP. It's because the same. It's the same dithering pattern I use for Zoomy. Uh, so they kind of look like they're the same visual language now. Before they looked a little different. Uh, so you can see if I just throw a shuriken. He has a little stun animation where he kind of like jiggles and like little bits fly out of him. And I don't have a death animation. That was what I was working on. I have the, the, the frames in Blender, but then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just add a state machine. That'll be quick. I'll get this done right quick. And it wasn't right quick. So you can see like once he tries to do the death animation, nothing happens. He just kind of falls away. He's still alive. He's down there in the bottomless pit, wiggling around on the ground. So uh, that's, that's it. That's literally it. Uh, all of yesterday was just getting those that one animation, which was quick, and then six and a half hours of hell. Of utter debugging hell. Yeah. That's day 12. 
I'm gonna go make some food and then I'm gonna finish the slime animations and then I'll record the vlog talking about the schedule going forward and then we're just gonna start grinding again because I don't have a second to spare at this point. Talk to you guys later.